<laughs> Ladies. Now, this is a very special episode of the Charming Smith's cast. Cash has his awesome little biker hat from yeah. what was that old movie with uh Police Academy. No. I'm talking about the black and white one. Where they go and they rough up the city, the guy with uh who is that, Marlon Brando? Marlon Brando, yeah. The, oh, um That's I mean that's yeah. where where it originates, but then yeah. it this hat ended up finding its way into the Blue Oyster Bar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it had its cool moments. Kaz got his hair cut. No, I got my hair cut. So he wanted to wear something to cover it up. I think it looks so, good, but... I, so I think it looks Oyster good, thing. so maybe a little bit longer on top, but... Yeah. Here's the thing. Kaz I'm walks into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, is, uh, I got it cut once, and uh, it was a really, really bad job. Yes, it was. And so I had to get it cut again, so it's a lot shorter than I wanted it to be. Yeah. But luckily, it they can grow out. It. It'll yeah. grow back. So, yeah, and, and I, I was telling my wife uh, about this, and I, and I said I'm glad it happened to Kaz now, because, um, because like me, I go in there and I say, cut it this way. They're like, it's not going to look good. I'm like, well, if it doesn't look good, then we'll just cut it all off. I don't care. Yeah, but remember the MGC Barbers? Did you yeah. ever go to them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's short? Yeah, just wait. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I'm glad I'm not going there. Yeah, just get it cut before because yeah, those guys, they don't care what you say. Yeah. Oh, you know, a little off the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're being in the military. Yeah. I mean, haircut-wise. Yeah. Not so, so anyway, so anyway, we, we just discussed the, <laughs> so in the last episode, we discussed the, um, the concert and Morrissey's new album. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to get, jump back into the Smiths and we're going to start covering Strange Ways. Strange Ways, here we come. Which, it, I don't oh, know how well you can see this. The um, cover of yours. Kaz, can you explain the cover for this one? So, uh... Wouldn't, wouldn't you Steve's know it? Steve's holding up a CD. Uh, yeah. last, Autographed. Last year, about a year and a half ago, I was able to meet Johnny Marr, and um, before I did that, I asked my dad uh, if he wanted anything signed by him, because I had brought my own records that I was going to get signed, and so he told me to bring along uh, his copy of Strange Ways, Here We Come, and... Uh, you know, I met Johnny, he was so nice, um, and he kept talking to me, uh, for a good, like, 10 to 15 minutes, just about, like, uh, where I'm from, how I grew up, what sort of music I listened to and everything, and, uh, by the end, I had given him all my records to sign, and on Strange Ways I said, would you sign this one for my dad? He's the big Smiths fan, he's really the one that introduced me to everything, and so Johnny Marr, wrote to Stephen, good work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, like... Yeah. And then so, Johnny Marr. Yeah, he's, that's awesome. Well, why did you have him... Uh, I don't know if... Why Strange did you Ways. have him do Strange Ways, Steve? Because Strange Ways is Morrissey and Marr's favorite album from the Smiths. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's why, I mean, ultimately, I would if I still had the 12-inch uh, single of How Soon Is Now... I would have ha rather had that signed, but Strange Ways is Morrissey and Mars' favorite Smiths album, mm -hmm. and that's where they they feel that they are at their at their best, and so why not at yeah. their best at the very end, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, this is, is my favorite Smiths album. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's it, like all of them. It's like no, the, if, the, no. I'm saying you, just you, in you, general, whatever I mean, mood. No, sometimes you're in a mood like, oh, you know, me as murder, you listen to a ton. Or maybe yeah. not some what you're saying, yeah. keep going. What, what I'm saying is simply, me as murder and strange ways are neck and neck for me, pretty much always. So that's Johnny Marr in the uh, recording studio. Yep. He's but, like, oh. I, I think it's really funny that they chose this photo, because oh. Johnny also said that the production for or the production and like the making of this album was actually when the band gelled the most and like oh, yeah. when they had the best time in the I'm studio. Still, I'm yeah. sure you still have uh, moments like that though where yeah. you're tired, I mean. You're that, tired, That's you the thing home. is that this, like like you said and, and Morse, or Johnny Marr said in 
in his autobiography. This, this recording this album was one of his favorite experiences. Yeah, and and so when they were recording <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> when, when they yeah. when they were recording the album, they uh, uh, they would record everything, and once they were done for the day. Morrissey would go off, and where they recorded it, I didn't know this, but they recorded it at. Yes. No, no, no. Go ahead, put it up. We'll, we'll stop. We'll stop you. I, no, I no, no. It wasn't that. I okay. was just. Is it kind of? Oh. So, so anyway, um, they recorded it at a studio, it and I didn't know this, but Echo and the Bunny Men actually owned the studio that they recorded this at. Really? Yeah. I so didn't know that either. Echo and the Bunny Men owned the studio, and it had a winery <laughs> or, or a, a wine cellar underneath it. Oh, okay. And so after they were done recording for the day, Morrissey would leave because he, you know, like his, guys, yeah, he, he wasn't like big into drinking, but him and Stephen Street and some of the other guys, they would open up the wine and keep going through and, and uh, producing the, the songs and, and getting other oh, things John going Martin, and, and drinking and everything. Well, that, Once that, they got that done, they start drinking even more. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that they talked about a lot because they weren't, they weren't a group. Uh, that would be Morrissey talks about it where they would go to the pub afterwards. Yeah. You know, and stuff. But they would drink at, in the studio, yeah. like you're saying. And they bring beer in and different things. Uh, especially at, at this point, they're, you know, doing, they're just having a lot of fun during yeah. it. So it's interesting that this is their last album because it's almost like they had so much fun. It's, it seems making the album. Yeah. Well, and, and so that was funny, and then the name the, yeah. the name of the album comes from Strange Ways Prison, which Johnny uh, Johnny said that he always thought that was a weird name for a prison. He's like, wouldn't somebody catch that and change say, hey, let's change the name to this? But I guess Strange Ways Prison was a horrible, horrible prison, like a terrible prison. Like imagine the worst prison you can and make it even worse. That's what Strange Ways was. And so when when Morrissey said that's what we should name the album, Mara was like, "Why are we naming it that? That's stupid." And then it kind of grew on him. At least yeah. that's what he said in an interview it, that the name grew on him, and he, he liked it a lot better. Um, yeah, it's like why? Well, because I always, you know, before I knew that, I, you know, I was like, "Oh, this is cool. Strange ways here we come. We're kind of taking a turn for yeah, kind of a weirder thing." But. But then all of a sudden you realize it's like prison here, yeah. basically. And it's like, oh, actually that, you know, that's cool too. Yeah. So kind of like we're on our way to the, I, but I always thought of it, because you would think strange ways, like, uh, would be like a mental home or something, you know, yeah. like the, anyway, yeah, but it's I not. I don't know, but that was. Um, that would be even better if it was like yeah. kind of craziness or insanity or. Funny farm. Yeah, but I, I gotta tell you, and I hope the I don't cry, farm. but this is awesome. I'm sorry, but it is. I, I can't, I wasn't able to go with them. I, I actually did want to go see Johnny Marr. Um, unfortunately, my my job prevents me from basically leaving uh, more than 20 feet away from my desk at times. Well, yeah, they were so. trying to get you to come into work when we went and saw Morrissey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, forget you guys. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Kaz went with with my wife and his mom, um, and uh, they got to they went to the show one night, and then the next night, Kaz and, and Elise went and met him. And from what I understand, what Kaz was saying is Johnny was actually being pulled back in the venue to get ready for the show that night, and Johnny refused to go to talk to Kaz and and yeah. to keep talking with him. Yeah. So that's actually really yeah. cool. I was just looking at the thing. I think it was okay. It was recorded at the Wool Hall. I yeah. think that's where David Bowie recorded some of his stuff too. It, it, anyway, I I just know that it was owned by Ian McCulloch and the uh, uh, and the Bunnymen, or you know all of the Bunnymen, mm -hmm. uh, because they wanted a, a better recording studio, a more relaxed recording studio, and so then they rented it out, and the Smiths got it. And they loved it because, you know, it had the wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, right on. <laughs> but, um, and, and, you know, if, you know, maybe, you know, if Johnny's watching it, you know, you can always come on the Smith's cast with us. Yeah, we'd love to talk to you. Kaz is leaving in, in a couple of weeks. You yeah, know? we need somebody. 
You know what? <laughs> Johnny can just fit right into this hat. This is this is kind of hat too, but Johnny Marr used to wear is kind yeah. of the rockabilly look too. Yeah. So um, we'll let's let's jump into it. This is uh, coming. This album is coming off of uh, their big Queen Is Dead tour, the U.S. and Britain. They had released a couple singles. And uh, they're they going back into the studio. Steam. I mean, they were they were starting to build a lot of of uh, worldwide fans. Yeah, they were getting even bigger. Yeah, that's it. And that man. Anyway, so they were getting even bigger. Yeah, and and being recognized. And because uh, the Queen is dead, actually, over over in the um, uh, in the U.S. made it somewhere in the. Hundred, yeah. I mean, which is or maybe a little above, but but anyway. So they're starting to get recognition. So let's uh, let's just jump into the first song that on this album. Let's rush in. Okay. Hey, it reminds me of a joke. I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah, I know. So it's, <laughs> it's got that little. You know what? Actually, the beginning with the piano that yeah. reminds me of Ouija board. Yeah, oh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I mean, obviously that was written after, but uh, it's an interesting, just like, you know, yeah, it, interesting beginning. Yeah. Because uh, you have uh, Joe who's hung, hung, but going through this time zone, this weird start that that Morrissey doesn't really. You know, that hasn't been in any song before, like this weird time travel thing. Yeah. Anyway. And what's what's lack what's not in this song? An accordion? No, there's an accordion. <laughs> guitars. There's an accordion. No guitars. guitars. It's an hard. But uh what no do you mean? yeah, no guitars at all. No, there there are like fifty guitars in here. And 30 clarinets. Oh, uh, there's, there's 50 <laughs> guitars, but they all just sound like they one just, piano. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, Johnny, Mar kidding. Johnny Mar talked about, and this this wasn't the first song he wrote for the album, but he wanted this to be the first song on the album because he made he was we just wanted to show, hey, I can do more than guitars. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I've been doing it. And you know, it wasn't like an F you to, to everybody because the rest of the al album has, you know, it's just kind of like, hey, I'm more than just guitars. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, because sometimes people go off and they start doing something else and you're just like, okay. But it was just something that he wanted to prove to himself. I can write a song that. No, I think it was also to kind of like spite a lot of people because he was known for being like this jangly sort of guitarist and he absolutely did not want to be known just for doing a little bit of jangle here and there. Well, no, I I, I understand what but I'm saying it wasn't, it, you know, he didn't, he didn't take it so far. He just like, you know what, the first song on the album I'm going to do with no guitars, Yeah. you know, that to kind of say, okay, guys, you know, you, you, you can't want to pigeonhole me or whatever. You want to put me in this thing. I'll just show you on this first song that I can do my own. Yeah. You know, without without the help of guitars, but the you know, and then but the rest of the album also delivers, and it's a great song. I love yeah. this song. Morrison's uh, vocals are awesome. Yeah, uh, honestly, that's one of my favorite uh, openings to an album. Is just Morrissey kind of like coming out of nowhere, yeah. screaming "Hello, this, I'm the ghost of Troubled Joe." Like a disembodied voice. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, oh. uh, yeah. Like you can't tell what he's saying at first. But then, and then, and then it goes into kind of a ska. Rock steady, you know, and actually that's one of the things that Morrissey and Marr, whenever they first met, they would listen to some different old Trojan, you know, ska records and stuff, which is really super popular over in, in England, like that early 60s ska or late 60s yeah. ska. That never, that didn't happen here, you know, but that influenced like into the jam and, yeah. and different bands later in the 70s. But, uh, Steve, what do you have to say about this? Read us some of the lyrics or whatever okay, you want so, to do. So, I like it just because, like you were saying, it's 
Oh, sorry, still tired. Still catching up on from Thursday. <laughs> um, uh, well, like right now, <laughs> in my life, in, in my current life, and Kaz can attest to this, there's too much caffeine in my bloodstream, <laughs> and the lack of real spice in my life. <laughs> How oh, true yeah. is that for me right now, Kaz? <laughs> so, but then I said, I said, leave me alone I'll, because I'm all right. Dad. <laughs> Wait, are we doing another conversation now? <laughs> like, this that song is an actual conversation. All right, but no, there are like no, no, conversation no. pieces in No, no but it's I, I think because... Morrissey's even, like, he, he is taking his lyrics too and, like, I mean, coming up with some new, new uh, takes on them, you know, and clever, super yeah. clever and. Yeah. Like, I mean, too much, yeah, too much caffeine in your bloodstream. Like, you know, it's just, it's just so super clever. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it's, it's actually a, it, it's actually a nice song. And it, and Mar was correct. This is one of the best songs to start the album off with. Yeah. I mean, it would have been, it, the album would have been a real downer if they would have started it with disco, uh, <laughs> a disco dancer. Yeah. Um, but this like really puts you in the mood. You're like right on. I'm I'm ready for the rest of the album, and and it drives you through it. And so that's that's why I like it. I like the the end the end line. But you're still a young man, so phone me, phone me, so phone me, phone. Me. Like he's picking up on this guy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Your youth may be gone, but you're still a young. I can't. How is it that you can't, whenever you try to talk lyrics, you can't. I can't talk clearly. Well, instead of singing, them. just don't mention love. Okay, we no, won't. No, no, don't mention. We love. won't. And people who are, but you know, just just listen, listen. People who are weaker than you and I, they take what they want from life. Yeah, so I, I really like <laughs> this because you know, I'm, I'm trying to think how to. Um, <laughs> You know, people are going to be watching you, Kaz. They're like, what is Kaz doing? You know what? This this actually has a... Probably. This time traveler, he traveled into the future to spend the day in bed. Well, no, you know what? No. Do you yeah. know what time zones are, Mark? No. <laughs> a mystical time zone. So not Myth, only... Yeah, it's not a regular time zone. So not only is he the ghost of Trouble Joe, he is also dimension hopping. Yeah. But he misses his bed and he's still super good. Yeah, he now, I, I'm sorry. Okay, so I so I actually heard this album when I still lived in Nebraska, and that kind of made me weird to everybody there because they hadn't they hadn't picked up on it yet. But um, so I listened to it Did there and I loved it. Did they ever pick up on it? Yeah. In Nebraska. Actually, yeah. That I, I'm surprised when we went back there. There was a lot of a, a lot of uh, a lot of things had changed. I mean, well, I guess with the actually that's, that's the thing. Yeah, it. that's true. Now, Be before the it's end, not like it used it. to be where. I, we're like in uh, Footloose, you know, yeah. you, have those sound, you know, where they don't listen to rock and roll or whatever, and they could actually do that. Now it's like the internet and all this stuff, yeah. like everything's available. Well, that, that there's one, there's one line in here, and it is uh, right at the beginning where it, where he says, "I traveled to a mystical time zone, but I missed my bed, so I soon came home." After I moved to Arizona, I became a really huge Simpsons fan, and whenever I heard that lyric from then on out, I always thought of of Homer Simpson because there's one episode where Lisa really wants a pony and so Homer takes on a second job and he gets to be really tired and he's, he's driving his car and he's like I'm so tired I'm so tired and he goes off he drives up into yeah. the <laughs> he drives up into but the that's like a bush <laughs> <laughs> yeah I remember so that's that. all I think about now when I when I hear that lyric were they playing like Mr. Sandman <laughs> or what was the song I don't, I don't know what it was he drives off the road yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's when you know. That's when the Simpsons started. You got to think that was when we were in. And yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. When the, the Simpsons when the Simpsons started, that was. I mean, when we were in high school. Yeah. yeah. Are they you got talking huge. about like the the TV show or the Tracy Ullman show? Both. Oh, both. Yeah, both. Because they were. Yeah. Because also, I remember the the Simpsons shorts. Yeah. There was uh, that one where Bart um, didn't want to go to church, or they yeah. became like little. Oh, what was it? They don't want to go to church. Oh, there's this whole anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so it started with Tracy Ullman's show, and then it went into the yeah. the actual show where it, everybody had shirt, t-shirts, and 
Anyway, it got huge. But yeah, yeah. And, Simpsons is great. And and this was before like DVR and digital and all that other stuff. So I'd have my VCR mm -hmm. with my tape there, and I'd be recording every. We'd episode. all come over and watch it. Yeah, and watch every, it. yeah. We'd have Simpson marathons at, at my house where everybody would come over. We just watch Simpsons left and right. Yeah. When are you guys gonna have Morsi on your show? Simpsons. Oh. When's yeah. he gonna be a guest? Never. The Simpsons have gone downhill so much. Well, I haven't watched it. Since. Yeah, exactly. exactly. See, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All right. Maybe, oh, so is there so, anything else you guys want to? Um. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. The Dude, was, I think I'm in Lerd. Yeah. Like just that. Just some of the things he does with his vocals too are like these new kind of. Okay, so then, you, so you start off. I mean, uh, you start off with the song "No, No, uh, No uh, Guitars at All," you know, but a great song. But then also, and then, and then also, Johnny's like, "Okay, guys." I don't know why. And then you have yeah. the bass come in. Yeah. Like this song, this you know, this is like that song that I was talking about that. Kind of remind uh, that new song on the album that young people must fall in yeah. love on his new kind of that fun. Okay, keep. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn it there, and then we can talk. Okay, and then we, and then we can far. turn it up. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so I, I just want to make sure that we don't get dinged. Yeah. Which again, so. Warner, we don't care if you place ads on this. Put them right here. Yeah, just put them right here. You don't have a mole face. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what do you guys want to... Oh, oh, this, this... Okay, listen to... Turn up a little bit. Okay. Listen to that. Horn. Yeah. Like, something that, that they've tried in the past on some of their albums and hasn't really worked. But then you got this deep, you got the, you know, almost like car horns, you know, like, but uh, but also you got the, the sax, like the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, from what I remember, this is the first album where Johnny Marr really got to play around with synthesizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. You, you have that, the low, the low saxophone, mm -hmm. um, too, that reminds me kind of of uh, T-Rex. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's kind of. A yeah. Well, this this was. Uh, so I like this because it, when I was a kid, I always thought uh, <laughs> I always thought this was about like a a, Sorry, a relationship that he didn't really want to get into. <laughs> and I'm going to share something that I think That's I've shared true. before. I've shared a lot of things I couldn't <laughs> finish. A lot of relationships where I and I, I'm not going to name names because I don't know where she is right Protect now. Protect the innocent. Well, I don't know where she is or if she even knows where I am, but when I was in Nebraska, I dated this this one young lady, and she was very beautiful, and, and I loved oh, yeah. I, I loved I loved being with her, okay. and, and so like some of the lyrics, like the high um, speed beans, hair brushed and parted, typical me, typical me, which you know is true. Um, that's what uh, I doused another vet venture with a gesture that was absolutely vile. And the first time around, he says, um, uh, I doused our friendly venture with a hard face, three word gesture. I always felt that meant I love you. Like I'm going into a relationship. Oh, I love you, honey. Oh, I love you too. Oh, you know, that three word gesture that didn't really mean anything. But when I was dating this girl, at first it was really great, but then I felt exactly like the song. I started something I couldn't finish because I was at, it, it came to a point in our relationship where I was really excited to go out with her and I, I was all excited. I was like, right on, I get to go out with her tonight. And then as soon as I got in the car with her, I was like, I can't wait to get home. Here, <laughs> well, here, so, but, um, that's pretty much everything really. <laughs> is that, no, but you have that, you have that, that initial, yeah you know, love thing and it's just the best. And then after a while, 
I mean, I'm not saying it's got to turn well, into the, the worst. Well, the, but the thing is, it's just kind of like it's not as exciting. Well, this was right before my my family decided that we were going to move to Arizona, which is a, a funny story in itself, which we'll tell later. But um, we were moving from Nebraska to Arizona, and the reason I didn't break it off with her was because we were moving in a few months, and I'm like, I could stick it out for three months. Hey, you know what, Steve? She's still waiting for you, man. <sighs> I hope not. That would that would hurt me so bad. I would be in a movie. I would feel bad for her because. Well, I want it because there's other things that happen. You would. I'm not, well, I'm not. Oh, gonna, no, no, no. I'm okay. not gonna bring them no, up. No, but I'm, no, I'm saying. I mean, I doubt she's waiting. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. I, I'm sure, but but she was a a, but, a very lovely lovely girl and. And you know, I'm super happy that I dated her. I had I had he tons said of fun. About all his exes. Yeah, about all two of them. <laughs> hey, I pluralized it. Hey, okay. He says that I, about all his ex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's just get the record straight here. Mark actually stole a girl a girl from me. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's how I made it plural for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exes. Cowboy so, ex. But yeah, so I mean that that's why I, I uh, uh, so that that's why I think about it. I didn't way. store steal, I took on loan. <laughs> yeah, you took on loan. <laughs> no, um she, I, she was only his with lyrics me to go to the concert anyway. So. His lyrics you know, they, they went from a lot of these sad you know, from the Queen is yeah. Dead, the singles to they're kind of like he's he's coming up with these really cool lines like like the hair brushed and parted typical me you know just these yep. and they're not necessarily about a whole theme he can be all over the place now yeah Kazer tell me about it nothing <laughs> nothing okay, okay but what, the, no. the bush baked beans or Heinz baked beans oh Heinz Heinz. no I'm more of a bush baked beans guy <laughs> No, uh, this song this song is really cool. It's a lot of fun. Uh, did you have something to say about this song earlier, about uh, the reason why this song was released as a single? Oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll get into this oh, with I another just, song. Ah, my arm. Oh. <laughs> oh. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into this with another song, but in the UK they were going to release um, Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before. But there was just a mass murder in the UK, and since the song taught, you know, has the line "mass murder," BBC One would not play that song. Period, and the record company was very afraid of releasing that as a single, so they released that single everywhere else. And in the UK, they got "I Started Something I Couldn't Finish," and so that's the single the UK got when everybody else got. Um, Stop me! Stop me! If you think you've heard this one before, and then once they released "Stop Me" in all the other places, or or when they released "I Started Something" in all the other places, that's when they released "Stop Me." So when they released that in the UK, they're like, "Yes, I have heard this one before." Yeah. Like, okay, so I'm gonna stop you right there before you even released it. Yeah, it was already way released. Anyway, it's just you know that's the thing is that these these climates, these political climates, and you know it's just. So stupid, the shoplifters of the world, like we talked about last time. You don't really mean shoplifters? It's like, no. oh, mass murder, oh. It's just so ridiculous. Like, yeah. Well, I, I remember, um, so Fox put out a movie. It was I mean, a, it's getting more and more ridiculous. Yeah, too. well, th this is about the ridiculousness. Is, is Fox put out a movie a while back, and it wasn't a, a great movie, but it, you know, it was, was a, a Harvey it was a good Weinstein movie. production? No. <laughs> That's really good the it, it, it was called <laughs> Neighborhood Watch. And this was right around the same time as Trayvon Martin oh. in Florida. And so they had to. Ch and, and the thing is, is Neighborhood Watch wasn't about Neighborhood Watch, it was a comedy with Ben Stiller. Yeah, and it was about aliens. They yeah, were watching for aliens. <laughs> That's what they were going. But out they, to, but to, because of the, because of Neighborhood Watch, and because the Trayvon Martin thing, and the guy was, you know, in the quote unquote Neighborhood Watch. They couldn't call it Neighborhood Watch anymore, so they had to change the title treatment, everything else, to the Watch. Hey, guess what? Nobody saw that movie anyway. Yeah, and it, and it's like, wait a I second. Remember. It, this has nothing to do yeah. with the same thing. Not even the ad showed it to be the same thing. And the original story was the Trayvon Martin. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they did all the reshoots in a week. <laughs> the, no, they, they so originally it's called Trayvon, and 
Anyway, but and then they changed the neighborhood. Well, <laughs> never mind. I'm, we're not making name, fun of Trey. What's the name that Prin Principal Skinner gives uh, his rendition of Jurassic Park? Oh, <laughs> I, I forget that one day. Um, I call it Billy and the uh, Billy and the Fantastic Gigantosaur. Or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah that. something to that effect. <laughs> You are so stupid. <laughs> and then you give it a name that nobody would even remember. <laughs> so, yeah, because of the polit the climate, or yeah. you know, that's the thing is that Morsi wasn't writing it, you know, to to address those things. But they're like, oh, this this is going to trigger too many people. And now, now in today, yeah. today's political climate, I can't even. Ugh. My well, on the, and 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 that's the thing. It's like I, I understand certain things are sensitive. <laughs> Like you don't come out with a movie about 9/11, in you know in in February of 2002, you know you just don't do that. That's don't. way too soon. But no wonder it, it didn't take off. <laughs> but it, if you if you have something like stop me if you think you've heard this one before that has nothing to do with the actual events that happened. It, yeah. It, I don't understand. It's, a, it's just a line. Yeah. I mean, okay, so what's the Oh wait, no, that stopped me. What, what was the line that? Okay, so it's the, the line, next. Oh, it's the next. Oh no, it's not. Yeah. The next. No, it's not. No, the next. It, but uh, it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, a shy, bald Buddhist reflect and plan a mass murder. Who said I lied to her? And that was the line that caused all of the ruckus. Yeah. And it's like, wait a second. You know what? That's the thing is that they're they're trying to act sensitive, but I just and I just there people are just looking for prop things yeah. to. to bitch about. Yeah, well, when, when my mom this died... This is a family-friendly show, Mark. <laughs> so, the thing is, is when my mom died, I was, a, I was a young kid, and... <laughs> I, I don't I think was, people... Well, hold on. Okay. I don't think families are watching this show in the first place. <laughs> I, don't, I think we're watching I don't think this anybody's show. watching this show. <laughs> so, well, you know what? Us? Let's just start cussing. Cuss up a storm? I could do that. I could, too. Are you too, cussing but... with me? <laughs> huh? You cussing me? You, you cussing, cussing with me? me? <laughs> I'm cussing with you. Okay. So anyway, my mom died when I was like nine years old, and uh, it was a big thing for me. And it wasn't like she died in some like major like national tragedy or anything. But all my friends were making fun of it because they were at the city pool. You had the, the worst friends. Well, they weren't making fun of her, but they heard the ambulance and they were at the pool. They're like, "Oh, they're oh. coming for me! Oh, I'm dead!" And then they fall oh. into the pool. Oh. Okay. And then they realized that was me. That it was my mom. That that the oh. ambulance was coming for, and they were like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, one, you had no idea. Two, who cares? Um, oh, I that's, see. You know, I thought, it, but I remember deal. the very first or second Swiss cast you were talking about your friends making fun of you for having yeah. asthma. I was like, you have the worst <laughs> friend. <laughs> no Why asthma? Like, no. that's not even funny. No, I, I know, but but that's, that's so that's when. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have asthma. Yeah, you <laughs> have it. Yeah. So anyway, it, it was just, I, I don't understand why people always need to be offended. It's like, I, I'm sorry something bad happened to you, but that's not what this is about. This isn't something you, that you should you be know, offended about. I think with the Smiths, though, because there's, there's probably songs that have reference to all kinds of stuff that came out. I think they, they, they were just, not the Smiths, but the record company and also the, yeah. uh, the uh, people that, the radio the and stuff. We're just looking for reasons not to play the Smiths. That's, yeah, and that's probably and, and, and the that, big thing because they were blowing up. You know, they were getting so big, and and all these big, you know, conglomerates, media conglomerates, and stuff just didn't get it, and they were trying anything they could to suppress, suppress yeah, it. Yeah, and and that's understandable, and and I understand the lawyers have to watch the you know for the litigation stuff and and for all that other good stuff. That's great, but at the same time, you know, whether it's it's a, a movie, a music, a TV episode, I, I think it's just kind of it, it, it's just kind of weird. And and on Morrissey's new album, he has that song, "Who's Gonna Save Us from the Police?" Yeah, he should have a song, "Who's Gonna Save Us from Ourselves?" Because quite honestly, when, when do we get to the point where where we can actually? Um, uh, like even in the even in the song, I started something I couldn't finish. I, I started something, forced you to a zone, and you were clearly never meant to go. 
and, okay. and it's it's just like this. I started something like I created a song, and I was going there, but you guys are taking it somewhere, and you clearly weren't meant to go there. And so mm. now we're in this you know weird area, and and now we're having to deal with a whole bunch of nonsense. Yeah, when it had nothing to do with yeah. anything. Okay. Nice. Okay. So anyway. Well, you want to? Okay, so we got a fun. I mean, a really fun song. All these, all the uh, brass and stuff going, or the emulator. You know, just kind of a different. And and I think that's why the enemy hated this, because they didn't really like the Smiths or Morrissey. Yeah. That's and what I'm saying. once he started getting really big, they're like, yeah. screw him. That's what I'm saying. They're just they started looking for things and like, oh well. I mean, he's talking about shoplifting, you know, or he's talking about mass murder. Oh, but we just had this thing that happened. How, you know, it was just, they were looking for reasons and they weren't going to play him anyway. So do we want to go? Now let's talk so about So they killed him. <laughs> <laughs> so but. then, then we have this. I love I love the bass. So I'm gonna speed it up here. Well, the drums too, though. Yeah. Like he starts kind of the the cool. Show later. Yeah, because it really gets. Wait. Oh yeah. That's that's the old Moser. So, okay, the, one of the cool things is that this is Morrissey's debut on a, something other than his voice. Yeah, playing or an instrument tambourine. Or tambourine. <laughs> so that's him on the piano at the end. I like, the, the interesting thing about this song is they start ri kind of riffing almost like a jazz kind of thing at the end. Yeah. Where, where uh, Mike Joyce is playing like different drum beats and stuff and then they're and then uh, Johnny Mars playing all this guitar stuff, and then they uh, uh, Morrissey's banging away on the piano. Yeah. And I just read that they had actually kind of cut down his stuff, <laughs> some of it. But actually, an interesting thing at the is that in Morrissey's autobiography, he's uh, he talks about this, you know, him doing the piano, and then Johnny Mars comes up to him and he's like. Oh, you did great on the piano. Hey, do you mind if I clean it up a little bit? And then Mark's just like, Yes, I mind if you clean it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't really, you know, change, change it. Mark, but my, uh, Johnny Marr wanted to redo <laughs> the piano part. I can't remember if, uh, I can't remember where it is, but somewhere in this book, I think, uh, Stephen Street makes a comment uh, about uh, this song mm. and says something like, it was so great, and Morrissey just kind of like asked if he could play the piano and fiddle around, and we just thought, sure, whatever. And he did it all in like one take. Yeah. And then afterwards, Stephen Street kind of thought to himself, I, I wasn't even sure if he knew what he was playing. Yeah. <laughs> he probably didn't. He didn't know the notes or anything. He was just screwing around. You know? Yeah. It's uh, right. I I read that earlier. Um. Um, hear Steve talk. Okay. It's also uh, Johnny Marr's debut, uh, oh, vocal-wise. And this? Yeah. Johnny Marr does backing vocals at one part in the song. Are you sure? Pretty sure. And there's an accordion in it, too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not throw an accordion, too? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. No, that's what, I thought that was on a different song. Um, hold on. Okay, so... Here's Stephen Street talking about it. Uh, it wasn't quite so comically casual. Okay, so Stephen Street says, Morrissey suggested it. He just went down and said, can I try this piano thing? And did it. I don't even know if he was sure what notes he was hitting, but it seemed to work really well. And this the singer Dolly made Mary hell on the ivories. <gasps> this is a family show, Stephen. <laughs> And it says much of which was later cut out or concealed, <laughs> earning his way 
uh, to his only instrumentation credit on a Smith's record. I don't think it was on this song that Johnny. It's, okay, so it's, it's anyway. one of the. It's one of the. It's. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, Johnny Johnny does sing somewhere on this album. But actually, like we talked about, if you watch the 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 show at the Hacienda, where Johnny has that little the little backing or the yeah. little microphone and he sings it, that was awesome. I think he sounded pretty good. But uh, this piano on Death of a Disco Dancer by Morrissey. Yeah, it's almost like if the piano sucks on Death of a Disco Dancer, blame Morrissey. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's not. It wasn't this. Wait, let's let me see what's um, now. You got me thinking, Cassie. Okay, so I like how we're all just looking mm -hmm. through uh, through our notes and whatever. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll figure it out. But okay, so Death of a Disco Dancer. Now, okay, if this this should have been, they should have never put this on the album because I'm sure somebody's been shot in a disco club before. I can't yeah. believe this. Would you go but to the end of the track? I'll read all like, very end, like maybe no, like I'm talking like ten seconds left. Does it say something at the end? Yeah. So turn up, turn, turn up, up, turn up. You have to crank it up because he says okay, something. Okay. All the way. Once it gets there. Uh, you can't quite hear, but you can. Yeah, there's. I'm not sure little. if the microphone can pick it up, but you can just barely hear uh, Johnny Marr say some bits, and then uh, what he says is some bits of that were incredible. Just that was uh, the a final tiny little take. bit. Yeah. yeah. So no, that wait, that's not where. That was huh? the that was the original live take of the song. Enough said. Enough said. So, okay, so the, the lyrics, the death of a disco dancer, well, it happens a lot around here, and if you think peace is a common goal, well, that goes to show how just how little you know. Anyway, okay. and I, I love the love, peace, and harmony, you know, very, nice, very, nice, very nice, but very maybe nice. in the next life. Yeah, because he's right, well, love, peace, and harmony isn't going to happen. Heck, it doesn't even happen in everyday life. I'd love to go through one work it's day with saying, love, it's peace, not, and harmony. Yeah. <laughs> Just eight hours. Give me eight hours. So of that. it's cool though, because he's he's reciting that thing, but then it, it kind of goes into this chaos with the music. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's not happening here. So, and it's it's this free form, not free form, kind of riffing and jazzing or whatever. You know, Marcy's actually prophetic in this. He says, "The death of a disco dancer." Well, I'd rather not get involved. I never talk to my neighbor, i just rather not get involved, and I think that's a big problem. And today, I mean, he was prophetic even back then, he's like, you know how many problems we'd solve? Or, you know, if we're we talk to our around? neighbors? Yeah, if we just talk hey, to our neighbors. You know what makes good neighbors? neighbors? Big fences. <laughs> big fences. <laughs> High fences make good neighbors. That's, yeah. But, but seriously, I mean... I, it, it's just, and again, I'm not going to go off on another rant. It's just yes, he, was, he was very prophetic back then. I mean, even back then in the in the late '80s, um, there was still there was still more of a neighborly feel than there is today. Now it's like, hey, well, it depends on where you stay live. Away from me. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely yeah, does. That's the thing in is the that cities, it's like, don't talk to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes you're just yeah. Like somebody, actually I was just recently listening to something, they were talking about they lived in this apartment place, you got a couple thousand people living in, yeah. but they don't know anybody. Yeah. You know? It's just and weird. It's like, wait, whoa, wait a second. Yeah. I mean, so, anyway, so, be when he kind says, to each other, people. Love your neighbors. Well, that, and, and I think that's the other How thing. About that? Well, I think that's the other thing that Morrissey is saying here is like, love, peace, and harmony. Uh, very nice, but maybe in the next world, because the line before is, you're not talking the, to each other. I'd rather not get involved. If you don't get involved, you can't... You yeah, that love, peace, it. and harmony is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. If you're so wrapped up in your own oh, world. That's uh, To talk about that, take it off onto another tangent. Kaz will know this. Um, in an X-Files uh, episode, uh, Je Suis Heat or, or something like that, where Mulder finds oh, the genie in the, uh, in, the, in the carpet, 
It was a great episode. Some of the X-File episodes are so funny, and this was one of those funny episodes. And so he finds this genie and he grants him three wishes. The genie grants, grants him three wishes. And so he's like, okay, for my first, you know, so it ha if it has to be altruistic, then, you know, I wish for world peace. And she said, are you sure that's what you want? And he says, yeah, I want world peace. And, and she says, is that, is that the wish? And he says, yes, I wish for world peace. And then she says, okay, grant it. And he's like, just like that? Yep, world peace. And so he starts going around. Nobody's around. He's the only man on earth. <laughs> he yeah. starts running around. He's like, what are you talking about? That's <laughs> the only way it's going to happen. You said you wanted world peace. Yeah. Isn't it peaceful now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh... um, I can't remember what book it's in, but uh, some author uh, on the Smiths makes a remark about how when this was released was also the time when uh, Mad Chester and like that whole movement mm, were starting. Yeah. And I, that's what I kind of relate this set of lyrics to is, uh, oh, you're talking about love, peace, and harmony, yeah, in this. and yet you're doing all of this? Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, they, they, they and, and here they say that it was almost prophetic because then, I mean, the death of a disco dancer, all of a sudden this new scene of all these people dancing and doing all these drugs yeah. and people dying and then things got really violent yeah. whenever in the 90s you know later uh whenever and, and then they ended up you know really at first it was all fun you know like you, oh there's this new drug x they call it x man or whatever but uh you know it's the love drug but then yeah. after the longer it went, yeah. the more crazy it got. And then even Johnny Marr talks about him and Bernard Sumner whenever they were electronic. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of these these ruffian, uh, British ruffians, you know. Hey, Johnny. You know, sitting on the hood of his car one night. Yeah. He came out from a, you know, one of the clubs probably the, at the Hacienda. Oh, can we talk to you for a bit, Johnny? You know, and they're all like, oh, we're getting a little thing together. And Bernard said he loves it, you know, that he's all in. We want to, you know, we want you to play for a show for us for electronic and stuff. Kind of like, so suddenly this kind of element of undesirables kind of came into it yeah. and kind of took over the scene. So, yeah, whatever. That's, but yeah, the dead, so there ended up being a lot of dead disco dancers. Yeah, except for Disco Stew. Disco Stew. <laughs> has room for two. <laughs> so I think. Uh, All right. <laughs> Sorry, Cass. I, I, I think just from these like first three songs, you could already tell like this is a very different Smiths album. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. Um, I mean, Morrissey playing piano. Yeah, musically, lyrically, like the atmosphere around it, it's a very different album, and I, I think you can kind of see that in like how it stands today because I feel like if you take The Smiths or Meet Is Murder or The Queen Is Dead, you could pick songs off of that that you could just like uh, jam to or you could just put on, have a little dance party uh, or whatever. But this one, I feel like the gravity of the songs is immense. Like Death of a Disco Dancer is one that I have to be like involved in, yeah. truly involved in. Jesus. Play it a little bit on the it, piano or whatever. <laughs> Is that how you get involved? Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Just I, I'd rather not get involved, <laughs> actually. Yeah. 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 Um, well, but what I mean is simply, it it just has that weight to it. And for that reason, Death of a Disco Dancer is actually one of my favorite Smith songs because we, of like all of that drama. Yeah, this one's, a, this album, the whole album's like a very cohesive album. like. Like it works together. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where it, some songs, maybe. Well. No, no, no. You, you're they, right. They could stand on their own, but you're right but because it, if you look at it, what you were saying before, like what's the what's the one thing that's missing from the first song on the album? Guitars. Guitars, and then what happens on the second song? Guitar. It's driven by guitars, and then yeah. what happens on the third song? It's Perhaps. driven by the by oh, the, the bass. bass. And the drums uh, the, that, that's at what I'm the saying. end. That's what I'm saying. So the first song is, is no guitars. Second song is driven by guitars. Third song 
starts out with bass and then drums and then just starts exploding into a a massive uh, chaos type of event and it, and it, it's really good because it shows the range at of, of the group at the time yeah it's like they're coming out like like I mean it's like the Beatles rubber soul but better I mean at all the, the stuff after like who knows what could have happened exactly. but this is like this is like the like you got the the Beatles kind of standard stuff and also you got rubber soul which is like ooh, this is different and also you go into this weird stuff I wonder where the Smiths would have had when yeah, and, and well, that's, the hate probably. that's that's what I'm <laughs> well that's the whole thing is is some of the things that I've read is once they were doing this some of the songs on Viva Hate were actually proposed for 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 this one. Oh yeah. And and so I have to wonder if Johnny Marr would have helped write some of those songs on Viva Hate, would it have been better? Well Viva Hate's a really already, good album. That's what that's yeah. what I'm saying is how much better would it have been if Johnny Marr wrote I think I think stuff. Viva I know, but I'm just saying I anyway this is but uh, Viva Hate is a very is a super is probably Morrissey's solo his solid, most solid album. Yeah. For me. Yeah. But it's the one I, the one I, you know, basically it was like the Smiths and that album. They were all lumped together for which, me. Which and is it, why, And it's why it's in this book. Yeah. And the original Italian after, after Viva yeah. Hit is when Morrissey stopped writing in his native tongue. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you got, yeah, because in, the, in this they have all of the Smiths and then Viva Hate. But then, then again, you got to remember it took him a while to come out with that actual album after Be the Hate too. He had the singles. Anyway, yeah. now we're going off on. Yeah, but but, but that, that that's what I'm saying is, is we're gonna have to cover that when Cast is gone. Yeah, then then it'll still be the Smiths Cast, but we'll cover other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Smiths Cast. Well, I, yeah, I definitely want to cover Be the Hate and then the singles. After yeah, that, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But then after that, whatever. Uh, because one of my favorite. One of my favorite all-time solo songs is, is that one by the Cookies. No, 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 no. <laughs> solo songs by Morrissey is <laughs> no is uh, uh, Last of the Famous. Oh yeah. Love oh yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. So guys, um, the, we're we're getting off into our we're, uh, preview of future things to come. Yeah, sorry. The the. But what th that? That, that's what I'm saying. That's why Strange Ways is, is such a, a, a solid album is because what? you start listening to it and you're like, wow, this is really great. What would have happened yeah. had they stayed around? I mean, think of think of and all it, the different things it that they been, would have done. Yeah, and like you said, it probably yeah, would have been Viva Hate even better. But I, mean, I loved it when, when Johnny went off and joined The The and even toured with The Pretenders. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I got to see him when he was with the Pretenders, and they came here, I think, with the B-52s, and and it was awesome. I wanted to be here for the Pretenders, and the people I was going with, they're like, no, I want to go see the B-52s. We can go later. I'm like, no, no, the B -52s. no. The <laughs> B-52s. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, we got next week we're going to do the – we're going to finish up. Strange Ways, next next two episodes. Next two yeah. episodes. So, and we get to see the fall of the Smiths. Yeah. Before this this album Actually, is even out. Yeah, the Smiths it's crazy. fall apart. Like Johnny Marr was already touring down in, in in South America with the Pretenders. Yeah. It's just yeah. It, it's an interesting story. We'll tell. We'll get more into that stuff, um, and then more into the songs too, because there's well, some great the, songs. Well, the album it, was was completely. Yeah. I mean, they had laid down everything. They just needed to put some finishing the, touches here. And there. The album was done. It just okay, let's just do it right now. The album was done, yeah. And then all of a sudden, Johnny Marr was going on... Okay, we're just going to do it. Johnny Marr was going on a two-week vacation with Angie. Yep. That they hadn't... You know, they'd toured, been they touring. Have, yeah, they need So it. he's like, I'm going on vacation. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Morrissey, Joyce, and Rourke called him called in Johnny and they're like uh, oh yeah and, and with with Mike Joyce at the head as the spokesman yes and this and so and stuff happens so we'll, we'll say that for the next one then. Ooh. Yeah. yeah this is stuff I don't know so I'm yeah I'm actually, this, this I'm is actually his autobiography. 
It's it's that. really interesting. This to, is to a hear. Mars autobiography. Yeah, Mar. Yeah, I miss this because you just read the Queen is Dead section. No, I read all of it. Did I miss it somewhere? No, I it's, it's you reading well, all of it. Huh. Anyway, okay. So yeah, check it out. You read read up on it because it's really interesting. Wow. The power, the kind of the that. the power thing shifted. And now, and now <laughs> Joyce had all the power. Well, that's why he went at 25%. <laughs> he was like, my work at the last seven days of the Smiths. So, but they had totally completed the album, and all of a sudden they wanted to do more. And, and Johnny Marsh was like, guys, come on. Anyway. Okay, so say, uh, leave comments. Um, Dave? Dave, it was <laughs> fun hanging out with you at, yeah. at the concert. I loved that. Um, we should hang out more often, but you know, even my family says that to me. Hey, Dad, we should hang out more <laughs> often. <laughs> like you're always locked up in your room. Yeah. Well, I miss my bed. <laughs> Speaking of hanging, out, I spent the day in bed. <laughs> Speaking of hanging out more often, um, next next time we do uh, the couple next couple episodes, it's actually going to be my last time doing this with you guys for yeah. at least a long while. Hopefully Kaz will write us letters every once in a while that we can read. I'll write you index cards. We'll, we'll let you, Steve will let you know, hey, we're doing Viva Hate, and then you can write us, you know, and say, we'll read your little opinions. Yeah. Hey, how about you start commenting on our thing? Gee. I don't think he can. Yeah, I don't think I'm allowed to. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, but anyways. I'll send in the letter. I'll be all dressed up. <laughs> I'll be all dressed up in a suit. Uh, suit and tie. Yeah. Preaching the word. Yeah, so hey, if you're in Florida. Yeah, if you're watching Tampa us from Florida, area, you he's, recognize he's this gonna guy. He's going to be there, okay? That's, That's him. right. So he's going to be in Tampa, Florida. He'll be riding around on a bicycle. I'll sign. Chased by alligators. I'll sign your <laughs> <of> the <CDs. laughs> There's a lot of gators there. I mean, alligators, not gator gators. I'll teach you. Ones. Anyway. But there is. It's crazy Listen, going down some of the streets. If there's if there's things I know about uh, Florida, it's that there's a lot of insects, there's a lot of gators, and there's a lot of cougars, if you know what I'm saying. Oh. Wait, you're not going after the cougars. So. No. Not not until after. <laughs> He's out for you gotta go on a cougar hunt after <laughs> I gotta go back and I'm gonna scope out those fifty year olds. I went with them cougars. So anyway, so yeah, so uh, two more episodes with Kaz sitting here, and then we'll be getting letters from the uh, front. Yeah. And that we'll we'll read as long as you're not too preachy in them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you're preaching the gospel of the Smiths, <laughs> then we'll listen. What are we gonna go out? Oh, wait, on? he'll be anyway. Um, um, let's go out on uh, death of a disco dance. The end. The end. Yeah. Okay. This is the end. All right. Or do you want to go out and... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Oh, wait. Yeah. You know what we haven't done for two episodes? This, oh. is, this is the Charming Smith's cast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. no! <laughs> Mark. Kaz. Steven. All right. Dang. Yeah. I know. I, I we screwed up. Oh, well. All right. All right, see ya. Cheers.